Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and a brand new video. In this week's video, I'll be showing you how I built this set of shop cabinets out of some leftover birch plywood that I had from a previous build. You'll see me make these without using any screws or nails other than the face frame. And with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I needed to do on this set of cabinets was to rip and cross cut all of the scrap plywood that I had to get everything broken down to size. So the plywood that I have here is 3 quarter inch thick birch and I'll be using this with dado groove style joinery to put everything together. So each piece of the cabinet except for the doors and the face frame will be made from that 3 quarter inch birch. One really important aspect of breaking down all these pieces is to make sure that the fence stays in one place throughout the cut. Whenever you move the fence to make the other cut, you don't want to have to move it back to that original space. So make all the cuts in one spot first, then adjust the fence as necessary. So with that said, here's a look at the panels that I had. Now I'll be making two cabinets so you can see at first I ripped everything to the same height, then I adjusted the fence inward and cross cut them to the different widths. Clearly you can see it didn't take long before things were falling apart and if you thought I would make it through an entire video without something falling apart or dropping it, well you would be mistaken. Anyway, the idea of setting those cabinets up before everything was actually ready to be put together was just to show you what the outside frames of those cabinets will look like. And now here I'm cross cutting some shelves out which will make up the shelves of the cabinet pieces. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be using dado groove joinery to assemble these cabinets. And if you find yourself interested in this dado blade or the setup blocks that you can see me using here, you can check down in the description where I have a link to both of those products as well as all the other tools that you'll see me use in this video. So the dado groove is cut around the outside of the side pieces and then I'll cut the inside grooves to where the shelves will go. I'll also cut these same grooves on the back side of the cabinet. And if this seems a little confusing, just stick with me because when we put these pieces together, it'll make a whole lot more sense on how those grooves and panels line up. Just as a side note, the dado groove is about 3 8 inches deep, which is half of the thickness, and then I'll leave a 3 quarter inch gap on the outside between the fence and where the blade will be cut, which will make more sense when we put the fringe cleat on the back of this and attach it to the wall a little later in the video. Whenever assembling something like this, I would highly recommend dry fitting everything together first to make sure that it does fit and all those seams line up. If you put the glue down first when you haven't dry fit it and you're off slightly, you are going to have a huge mess and glue everywhere. And I am speaking from experience when I mention this. So go ahead and dry fit everything first. And then when it does line up, go ahead and put glue right down in those dado seams and you can reassemble everything. So with the cabinet frame assembled, I put clamps across the joints on each of those. And then while that glue was setting up, I got started on the face frame of these. So I'm using rough sawn poplar board here. And the first thing you want to do with any rough sawn lumber before you use it for face frames is to mill it up as close to perfectly square as you can. The typical milling process will begin on the joiner where we joint one face frame then one edge, run the opposite side through the planer and then finally with three sides all squared up the boards can be ripped to the width that they're desired for whatever you're building. For this frame I ripped all the boards to an inch and a half thick. 
I'm not sure if that's technically correct or the proper way to do it, but I've always used an inch and a half before and it seems to work out just fine. To cut the boards to length, I'm using my crosscut sled. And if you typically will use a miter saw to cut boards to length at their final dimension, I'd really recommend checking out a crosscut sled, especially one with a stop block on the end that's adjustable. Really makes it easy to make those consistent and repetitive cuts. I didn't want to put a face frame on the inside shelves of the cabinet, so I just attached some birch edge banding to the side, which is done by basically just ironing it on because it has glue on the back side and when that glue heats up, it sticks and it's actually really hard to peel off. You can see me getting those edges off with a chisel earlier and then using a trim tool to actually cut that to the same width that those cabinet shelves are. So this next step is optional on the face frames, but I'm using a domino to connect those corner seams on the face frames of the cabinet. Now if you don't have a domino, you could do the same thing with dowels, pocket holes, or you could just glue them together and they would likely stay in place. But I like to use a domino, it's a very quick way to get through this step and make those frames stay together. Once that face frame is together, we will secure it to the face of the cabinet using glue. And after I have everything clamped down, I'll go back and put brad nails through the face frame to make sure everything does stay in place. So if you just wanted the cabinets to stay open all the time, you would basically be done at this point. But to create the illusion that my shop is cleaner than it actually is, I wanted to put doors on these cabinets so that I could just throw everything in there and keep it hidden and make it look like it's clean from the outside. To make the doors for these cabinets, I will be using rail and style type router bits that you can see here. And I did a previous video on this that goes into a lot more detail and a good explanation of how to set these bits up and how to use these bits. So if you click on the link at the top of the screen, you can see this process in more detail. But for a short explanation, with this video at least on how these bits work, you'll use two different router bits that form an interlocking joint that line up and fit together perfectly to create a 90 degree angle. One of the bits also cuts a nice groove down the edge of the inside piece of each one of the pieces that you have. And this groove lets you slide a panel or a piece of glass down in the middle to form that inside piece of the door. After using that first router bit to trim the groove and the first cut on each of the pieces, we'll switch out the router bits to the other interlocking bit and then use a coping sled to cut the adjacent edge of that board, which is where the actual joint will be formed whenever these pieces are put together. There are several different types of rail and style router bits, each which will give you a little bit different look. The set that I have here leaves a nice detailed edge on the inside of the pieces, which honestly, I think these bits look a little too fancy for shop cabinet doors. So if I was redoing this, I would probably use standard shaker style, rail and style router bits. But in the end, they still worked great. You can see here that I got in a big hurry and forgot to cut the inside panel before I glued these pieces together, which is a really stupid mistake. And here's how I felt when I realized I did this. Oh, idiot. Thankfully, I realized what I did before the glue had set up, actually before I even got that second clamp on. So I grabbed some quarter inch birch plywood, quickly cut out the inserts, popped those pieces apart, and then glued those pieces in the middle before putting the clamps back on. To attach these doors to the frames, I'm using half inch overlay hinges, which look a little complicated, but they're actually really simple to use once you understand them. 
So on the inside of the cabinet door, we first drill an inch and a half circle using a Forstner bit or whatever type of circle drilling bit that you have. And then the other side of the hinge has a three quarter inch clip that can be bolted to the inside piece of the face frame. After the first door is on, we do the same thing on the other side because if we only put one door on, that would kind of look pretty stupid. So we put the second door on in the same manner, stand this thing up, and then let's see if it closes. And it does close, but unfortunately it hits that other door, so we've made a huge mistake and we have to start over. Just kidding. Thankfully, these hinges have adjustments on the insides that can move the doors in or outward. So after a minor adjustment, you can see here that the doors close and meet perfectly in the middle. The last thing to do before we put this cabinet up on the wall was to put some drawer pulls on the bottom half of the cabinet to make them easier to open. They do make a jig that will center everything up and ensure that the holes are in the exact same spot, but I don't have one of those and I figured I'd be able to do this close enough by freehanding it. So I just laid the pole down, marked where it would go, made a consistent mark onto both door panels, and then drilled holes on the center. And then those poles can be attached from the backside just using the screws that were included. So at this point the cabinet is finished but we need to figure out a way to put it up on the wall. And in order to put it up on the wall you see me making a very simple French cleat system here out of plywood. So one board is cut at a 45 degree angle glued onto the back facing downward. And then that other board that was cut from the 45 degree angle will be attached to the wall using screws facing upward. So whenever this is set down on top of that, they'll form an interlocking joint that'll hold that cabinet very securely on the wall. I also glued a scrap piece of plywood on the top section, which you will understand what for here briefly once we get this thing up on the wall. Here's a demo of how the French cleat system works. So on that top board that's on the cabinet, it faces downward. The other board that'll go on the wall will face upward. And then, like I said, they will form an interlocking joint that is held down by the weight of the cabinet. Here's the shelf that I will be replacing with these cabinets. So you can see here, pretty unorganized with everything right out in the open. So using a level, we will draw a line on the wall. And then because I can only get the French cleat into one stud, I'll just be using two screws in that one stud. And then we can simply put the cabinets up on the wall. Now there is one downside to using this French cleat system that I don't necessarily like. And that boils down to the shelves being held onto the wall by their own weight, which is caused by gravity which also means that in the instance that gravity is somehow turned off in the future or becomes non-existent, these cabinets will end up just floating right off of the French cleat up into the ceiling and crashing through the roof. So in order to stay one step ahead of whatever gravity decides it will do in the future, I'm gonna bolt the top section of this right into a stud on the wall, which is what that top piece of scrap plywood was glued onto the top of this for earlier. Additionally, this is why we left that three quarter inch gap on the outside whenever we were cutting the grooves with the dado blade earlier. In all seriousness, I don't think the gravity is going anywhere. So that top bolt is just to make sure that these do stay on the wall in case that they're accidentally bumped into pushed upward where they would pop off of that French cleat. So that'll wrap it up for this one. I hope this provided some insight on how to make these cabinets. If you enjoyed the video, drop a comment down below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more.